Have you ever heard of the butterfly effect? The butterfly effect is a complex theory, mostly used in physics and mathematics. And if you allow me to oversimplify it, uh, this theory speculates that one small change of condition in a specific context can have dramatic effects down the road. The details of a hurricane, like time of formation, uh, path taking, the strength of the hurricane, can be influenced by minor perturbations, like the flapping of the wings of a distant butterfly several weeks earlier. And this theory is not just used in laboratories or in university classes. E, many have used it to try to understand how interconnected our lives are and how people's action can ripple across time and space to affect lives of millions. One example might be, uh, what if Adolf Hitler, instead of being rejected twice by the Academy of Fine Arts of Vienna in 1907 and 08, would be accepted in that school? One can hardly imagine the numbers of lives changed by this single event. Well, today's reading from the book of Exodus might also be a good example of the butterfly effect theory. The book of Exodus is often presented as the story of Moses. However, the fairly long reading of this morning is more the story of five women. Often many wonder where is the place of the women in the Bible? Well, here they are present and they are the heroes. If, and, and if they are not necessarily extraordinary individuals at first sight, the story unfolds and makes sense because of them. So first we meet a pair of midwives named Sephra and Pua, who happen to be appointed to the Hebrew women. And Pharaoh began to feel threatened by the increased number of Hebrews living on this land, orders them to start killing all male boys, whatever they get the chance. Fortunately, the two midwives know the difference between what is legal, meaning the decision made by a governing body, and what is legitimate what is considered to be fair and reasonable. Sifra and Pua make the choice to disobey Pharaoh. They refrain from executing his plan. They refuse to be complicit in an act of ethnic cleansing by saying no. These two women put their lives in jeopardy for the sake and the safety of complete strangers. Then we encounter an unnamed woman, and we just know that she's a Levite woman married to a certain man of the house of Levi. She conceives and bears a son and tries to keep him from being thrown into the Nile as Pharaoh commanded all his people to do. She hides her baby for a few months, but she understands that it cannot go forever. Out of option, the mother brings herself to make the most difficult decision of her lives, of her life. She get a papyrus basket, plaster it with bitum and, and pitch, and she put her little baby boy in it and leave it among the reeds on the bank of the river. 
in a total act of unselfish decision, she abandoned her precious child, hoping that he would have a better tomorrow without her. She put his well-being before her own needs and desires. And a little girl also show up in her story. You probably heard the expression, little girl should not be seen. Uh, sorry, little girl should be seen, not heard. Well, in the ancient Near East, in which women did not play a prominent role, to say the least, no one bothered to listen or even look at little girls. And still, the sister of the little baby boy decided to stay at the distance after her mother gave him up to see what would happen to her brother. The little Miriam, as we will know her in the book of Exodus, is courageous or bold enough to get out of her hiding place and to address a complete stranger. She dares to speak to a woman who belongs to a people that is oppressing her own people. She transgresses the expected behaviors of her society in order to offer home to our little brother. And finally we meet an Egyptian princess who come down to bathe at the river. She sees the basket among the reeds and discovers a child left there by his mother. The princess recognized the baby as one of the Hebrew and instead of abiding Pharaoh's clear orders she take pity on him and decide to adopt him as her own son. This act of defiance could have put Pharaoh's daughter in a very dangerous position. If caught, the consequence would probably be worse than being grounded for a full month. And yet, the prince's courage and compassion seems to be stronger than the possibility the, the possible consequences of her actions. Sometimes, sometimes we ask ourselves, well, what's the point of her actions? What's the use of all of this? Why should I continue to bother sorting my garbage and my recycling and putting my leftovers in a compost bin when there's millions and millions of megaton of CO2 released in the atmosphere every year? Why should I sign a petition demanding the respect of human rights in a foreign country when I'm pretty sure the leaders won't even take the time to look at it? What is the impact of my little can of spaghetti sauce will have to alleviate the poverty and the hunger in this city. We, want, we say to ourselves, I cannot influence the course of history. I cannot change a society all by myself. I cannot make a difference. I'm only one single individual. And yet this morning's story presents us Five women working alone behind the scene. Five women who dare to face danger, taking some risk, and challenging those who hold much more power and authority than they did. Five women who did not wait for God to intervene. Maybe they figured out that God has done enough as it was. Five women perform small gestures and make things possible through their courageous act of civil disobedience. These five women changed the course of history for the boy they save will be called Moses. 
and he will lead the Israelite out of the Egyptian captivity. And they probably did not know they were changing the world when they acted. They were just following their hearts as, and their conscience. They were just one single individual taking one simple initiative. And all of this, all of this ought to make us wonder, what if, what if we do also have the power to change the world? What if we make the choice to act and to be involved in our society? What if we begin to actually believe that the things we do this week, our actions, our decisions, our choices, will ripple out with consequences foreseen and unforeseen. And some of those gestures might be big, bold, and courageous. Other might be small and hardly noticeable. Maybe it might be a teacher who stays after school to work with the students that just need a little extra time to resolve this problem. It might be that man who decides to switch to fair trade coffee and buy it from a co-op, a farmer in South America. It might be this little girl who will come up with this crazy idea to raise hundreds of dollars for an elephant living on the other side of the planet. It might be a mother who gave us her baby boy and who would change the life of two middle-aged professionals more than could, they could even imagine. All of our actions have the potential to change the lives of people and others, and others we will never meet. All our actions have the power to make a difference. Often we believe that great men and great women bring significant change and make history. However, today's passage from the book of Exodus show us that the little ones, in this case, five women living in the patriarchal society, can have a significant impact. Their cleverness, hope, and courage help them to work around the edges and to defy our almighty Pharaoh. And through the action of bold midwife refusing to be part in the genocide, through the action of a desperate mother and a vigilant sister, through the compassion of a stranger, history was changed. At fear prevail, we would not know the name Moses today. At Pharaoh triumph, the story of God's liberation of God's enslaved people would not have been told. At the number of women not act out of compassion and courage, the history of the whole people would have been forgotten. At these single individual believe they could not make a difference we will not be here this morning. This is the butterfly effect theory. The story of five insignificant women change our lives. So my friend, may our action and our story have the same effect on the lives of others. May we always believe that we can change our world. May we start making a difference beginning right now. Amen.